This conference will now be recorded. Hi, Ranjit. Hi, Ubi. I hope my screen is visible. Yes, it's visible. OK, so today we are going to continue on the same topic. Uh, this is called exception. Um, so different options and exceptions we are going to discuss uh, how we can handle and how we can pass the information to the called method. These are the things we are going to uh, discuss today. Um, I'm going to alter the same code itself. Uh, just some small changes I'll be adding in the existing code. 
So let me make this as null. Okay, one more exception we are going to see. I am introducing one more array int array and it's null and uh, when I try to print some value so now I will come on the sketch also I don't need the sketch now okay. the existing code completely I am commenting I am adding a new code here so this is null and uh, in the output statement I am trying to print the value say array of 5 something like this and printing so let me run this code I will get error for sure I want to get error so I'm purposely running a code like this so it's compiling So now if you see it is running and it is not at all like I'm getting an error. I'm getting what null pointer exception because I have initialized in this code what I've done. I've initialized an array but I have assigned null. I didn't assign any value. I didn't say what is the size of array. Nothing I specified. I assigned null only. And that null value I'm trying to access. So I'm getting a null pointer exception. In this case what I can do here is I'm going to add it in the try catch block so same code I'm getting in last week whatever I had it inside the try block I'm going to add this code so for this particular code this C divided by B I have the arithmetic exception but this is null pointer exception right so for this I have to add an another uh, catch block so what I'm trying to do in this demo is you can have more than one catch block for a single try block that is the example i'm trying to do here so if you have this catch block order added like null pointer exception same piece of code you can have and you can copy paste also but depend upon the code i'm executing depend upon the error i'm getting it will go to the corresponding catch block and it will execute the code so here I will say I want exception. Now I'm going and running this code. It's compiling. If you see, I'm saying it, I'm getting error like cannot load int array with of null error occurred. So in this case, this arithmetic exception is not executed. It is actually executing the null pointer exception because the arithmetic exception already arrested the issue. Like I was checking that if B is not equal to zero, then only I'm executing this particular code. So I won't get this exception. If in case, if I get the arithmetic exception, it will go to this particular catch block and it will run the statement which is needed for this execution. Otherwise, whichever error I'm getting, that particular error only it will do. So I can add as much as catch block. I, if I come to know that I may get a arithmetic exception, I may get a, a null pointer exception, or if I don't know what type of exception I'm going to get, I don't have any any idea. But it's good to have the code inside the catch block. Means what I can do is I can have the general exception like this. So this exception, what it will do is 
whatever may be the error i'm getting okay if the corresponding catch block it is not specified if the null pointer exception is not specified means it won't really wait for this i'm commenting this for a demo purpose so now if you look at this i am having the null pointer error in my code but the particular catch block i removed it's no more in use so i have added this general exception now i am executing the code there are two exception i have added in the code one is arithmetic exception another is the common exception i have added once i added this exception it is saying that see it is coming to the normal exception code it is not giving me any problem at all so if you know the proper exception add that and you can catch it see for now i just put get exception but in the actual catch block we used to write some uh, uh, debugging statements also which will help us to trace what type of error we have received what is the input we have received what are the data you feel it is needed for your debugging purpose we used to keep it so if you identify the proper exception well and good if you don't identify then no problem you can go for this exception and you can print it second thing is there is a order related to it what it will do is this general exception will have the highest priority okay so for example let me run this code again i'm saying null just to differentiate the log statement i am giving uh, some different log names like arithmetic error occurred and um, this i would say that general error occurred something like that so that you will know which particular catch block is executed so i had it like this and i am executing like this when i run this code what will happen is now i have three catch block so it is going into the null error so it is going into the catch block for null exception correct perfect this is what is expected right so how it execute is it went into the drive block and exception occurred so first it is coming here and saying whether it is matching with the exception i'm getting this particular block is not matching so it's skipping that then it is coming into this and it is checking that whether this particular is matching yes it is matching and it is printing as this is printing the next catch block it is not at all caring about like it is not at all going to execute it so this is how it execute for example if i am changing the order of the catch block i will add this catch block at the top if i add this top what will happen this is taking the highest priority so this is and all not needed like it is saying that has already been caught what it is saying already been caught means what this arithmetic exception is part of this general that exception class itself this null pointer exception is also the part of the exception this is what we have seen right when i was like opening this file this exception this is arithmetic exception class right this exception is from the runtime exception when i open the runtime exception this runtime exception class is part of the exception so this is a super class right so obviously everything is covered there so you cannot change the order if you plan like keeping this exception that common exception one you have to keep it at the bottom okay why i am keeping at the bottom you can ask me that already i am i am catching the arithmetic and null pointer exception why i should specifically add this is there are some cases you may not know some new exception can occur and some runtime exception something like that in that cases it is better to have this exception if any of these is not matching with the exception i'm getting it will come into this block and it will execute so it's always better to have this overall exception at the last and the order is also matter and there are some cases we get something like uh, uh, i know some exception happened but whether i'm getting the exception or not i want my piece of some piece of code needs to be executed so exception means what it is like it will come out of the program execution end of the program it will happen it won't complete the program abruptly some activity is going to stop but say for example i'm working on some uh, uh, file open some file is opened and i'm working on it if there is an exception i have to properly close the file or i have to properly close the db connection kind of thing so i cannot keep the connection open it will create some problem with the db pool in that case what i can do is i can have a block called finally okay this finally uh, block you you yes. have a question here so suppose uh, i just keep uh, no catch a general catch exception right 
and uh, during the execution it will just throw like you know uh, it's a general catch exception or something so how can i come to know what type of exception it thrown it won't say general kind of exception anyhow i'm printing the exception message here right get mm -hmm. message see if it is for just log statement this is more than sufficient you don't need to add this particular uh, exception cases you can say catch exception this itself will catch me the what type of exception so this will provide okay. everywhere i put get message why we are specifically catching the particular exception is if i need to do some operation if it is an arithmetic operation some remediation i can add here and if i know that null pointer exception comes means some work around i can do here in that cases it is better to catch the individual exception for debugging purpose this itself will give me exact message it will give me cannot load from int so it will give me the proper exception for the debugging purpose there won't be any change in that okay got it yeah. so finally block is if you want to execute some statement whether the exception occurred or not you can add it inside the finally block so closing the db connection closing the file which is open so this you can add it here this gets printed just i'm giving some meaningful log statement itself uh, no matter what okay so this is how it will go so if you feel like some statement you want to execute uh, whether you are getting an exception or not some activity i want to complete it then you can go for this finally block so i have already told about the interview perspective that is uh, usually they will ask you the questions related to what is the difference between final finally and finalize so final keyword i already discussed today i have told about the finally also finally will come along with your try catch uh, uh, blocks so uh, it is also a block finally is also a block so it will execute no matter what whether you are getting a catch or try it will execute you can see it is printed here though i got a exception here it is printing so when and all it will be used is if you feel that some activity needs to be completed even though i get a exception means those kind of activity you can keep it here for now i just added a lock statement but in the real time this block will be used to close some connection open if some connection is already open and you are working a db connections or a file uh, process something you are doing if you feel that that needs to be properly closed then you can go for this finally block okay so two keywords we have already discussed finalize alone i had to tell you that i will tell as part of garbage collection next is check the exception so there are some exception uh say your ide itself will check and give you say for example i am dealing with a file new file and uh, i will give you the name of the file something like uh, abc.txt okay some file name i'm giving and um, i will do some operations on the file say i'm saying this is the name of the file and some input stream related operation i'm planning to do here like uh, new uh, file stream in that file okay I'm giving a code like this simple code only it is nothing but there is a file called abc.txt and i am going to do some operations on this if you look at this it is giving me an error because i am saying that there is a file called abc.txt but there is no guarantee that that abc.txt is available in my machine i didn't know whether this code is going to execute or not so there is a chance of exception here if file exists and the file is on proper format then only i can process the file so here i didn't do any validation simply i said that there is a file and you are going to process the file so what is this doing the id itself is giving me a recommendation that unhandled exception so usually in the previous example and all runtime only i was getting like some error so to handle that runtime exception i was adding some code but here when i type the code itself it is saying that there is a chance of exception you have to add the exception to the method signature so there are two ways either i can enclose this with try or catch this try and corresponding catch block i add 
or the other way to handle this exception is in the method signature we used to add like this so this is exactly like your catch and inside that catch block you can say that file not found exception e that also i can do so i will do that way also or this throws also will do the same thing so what i can do is i can enclose this particular code inside a try block and i can add a corresponding catch like this and i can have my uh, code inside that okay i i can do like that either i can go like this to avoid the exception to handle the exception avoid exception we cannot do handle exception we can do avoid exception means you have to add the proper validation that is the main thing you have to do for avoid exception but using this uh, try and catch block you can handle the exception so either with the try and catch you can do or with the throw statements i can handle this exception so what is the difference between try catch and close uh, throws is when i go for the catch block inside the catch block i can add some extra execution step that will have some uh, uh, some logic on top of it like uh, uh, if i get a automatic exception i told right some files needs to be closed some uh, db connection needs to be closed in anything if i want to do i can keep it inside the catch block but this throws what it will do is it won't do anything once it see the exception it will directly go back to the method from where it is called say for example this particular method is called from some other method called method a then it will go to the method a and say that there are i have faced some exception i am not an, uh, able to complete the task which i have told me that's what it will go and tell that is the use of throws one but when you add a proper catch block you can handle whatever logic you really feel like adding it as per the business need it's not like uh, anything you can add based upon the business requirement you can add the relevant code inside the catch block so two things one is catch block another one is throws thing and one more thing what we have learned in this particular demo that is this is called checked exception id itself is giving me a recommendation like you can expect some error so it was giving me an error message when i typed the code itself so that is called checked exception this is one of the form of exceptions you can do and after jdk 1.7 what they told us instead of adding uh, like this a uh, separate catch block for arithmetic exception separate catch block for null pointer exception if you are planning to have some business logic inside the catch block yes you can keep a two different catch block if you feel that no just for the print statement i have i'm not going to do anything additionally means what you can do is you don't need a separate catch block you can keep everything in the same catch block with a pipe symbol so what this is do is this is like your or operator right we have used in our uh, or operators exactly like this this particular block will be executed this catch block will be executed if you get arithmetic exception or a null pointer exception so any of these two if you face in your code then this particular code will be executed again i'm reinsisting if you are planning to handle some extra logic inside the catch block of arithmetic exception inside the catch block of null pointer exception then i would suggest you to keep two different catch block and you can add the relevant code inside that if you feel that it is not like uh, something new i'm going to handle both are same only lock statement i'm going to keep means you can have a single uh, like this okay and one more thing it is added after 1.7 jdk 1.7 only this is added next thing is um uh, one more uh, advantage or one more uh, thing in you will you will can you please uh -huh. explain the throws again i mean uh, i was still a bit confused on throws when we use throws sure sure no issues so in this demo i was telling the main uh, core of this particular execution is checked exception did you understand the checked exception that is my id itself was telling me that you have written a piece of code this piece of code is not good you may expect a exception because you have mentioned a file called abc.txt there is no guarantee that whether you have the file and the file is in the proper format so if you try to process the file without doing any validation like directly i was adding the file name right so it was telling that you may get a exception so it was giving me an option so i can handle the exception in two ways so this showing the exception the concept is called checked exception id itself is providing me the a uh, warning kind of thing or a alert kind of thing that is called checked exception 
how to handle the check exception is two ways the regular way is having the try and catch block so i can have this code in try and the corresponding catch block i can put i can add this is one of the way or what i can do is to avoid the checked exception there when i type so obviously i have to correct the error then only i can execute the code so now it is stopping me to execute the code because my i am having some problem at the compile time itself usually run time mean it's different this is compile time when i write the code itself is showing some problem how can i handle it is either try catch or in the method signature this we call it as method signature this is a method i'm saying that it has a static void main and there is some argument inside that so along with that method signature so once it is start the curly braces this is called scope of the method whatever i'm writing inside the curly bracket this is called scope of the exception right so before that whatever i have this we call it as method signature in the method signature i can have a keyword called throws following the throws keyword i can add what type of exception i have to throw so usually this is just a main method so this is a very first point where it is started but usually in your project execution you will have a method called method a that method a will call another method called method b and that method b is creating some issue some exception happen means that message needs to be passed to the method a the place from where it is initiated from where the request is sent right that method has to be informed how that can be informed is using the throws so this throws what it will do is it will pass the message to the method a from where it is called and it will say that you have approached this method but this method is not able to complete the task why it is not able to complete the task because of the file not found exception so the acknowledgement will be provided back to the called method sorry calling method so from where the request is initiated that is called calling method and the uh, place where the exception happened in this case is called method so what will happen the person who has requested will get a acknowledgement stating that your process is not completed because of so and so reason so that reason will be packed into this exception file not found exception so it will be sent back to them so for them acknowledgement is fine so that method will come to know that oh you i have asked you something you are not able to complete because of the problem i understand that is fine but when somebody calls you that somebody calls his main method and some problem happened means here i have to handle some business logic it is not like just like that some exception occurred i sent it back no i should not do right if some remediation i can do if i am mid of some db connectivity activity if i am mid of some file operations and all means i have to if so some file is already open and mid of the file process only i got some problem means inside the catch block only i will add the relevant code exception occurred i am unable to process everything in understandable but i have to properly close something before even executing the uh, sorry exiting the method before e even coming out of the method i should do something properly then only i will raise my hand say that i cannot complete the task but in the throws what will happen it will just go back when the exception immediately after seeing the exception what it will do it will go and tell the method method a and say that hey you send me a request and this particular method b is not able to complete so your process is stopped nothing i can do that's what it will do but in the catch block what it will do yes there is a exception occurred yes there is a problem but still i cannot just like that leave it and go i have some responsibility i will complete the responsibility then i will pass on the information so inside the catch block also i can have some throat statement that i will cover in the custom exception part how you can manually create a exception and send it to the uh, called method that i will be sending clear the throws one ranjit yes yeah, so basically you are saying uh, throws if the uh second way of uh, uh, writing the catch exception right catch one alternative way or am i the yeah, alternative way yeah okay so but uh, which one is better throws or catch i mean catch is better right because we can explain everything over here yes yes see when you go for this catch you can have some log statement any debugging things if you want any additional activity if you want to do you can do it 
okay but uh, wow. this throws will throw back so what uh, some of the ui developer usually prefer this throws kind of uh, coding if you do uh, look into this uh, ui frameworks there they don't have this uh, uh, response uh, responsibility related to servers and db connectivity activities and all right so what they will do is it's like method to method calling only they will do so what this ui developer will do instead of adding this catch blocks they will keep everything here itself when they when you see any method signature here only they will ask for throws file not found space uh, null pointer expression uh, space arithmetic exception everything they will keep it in the main part itself because they want to throw the message to the uh, called uh, uh, calling method because uh, it's an acknowledgement that's what ui developer need but back end development means you are connecting to a database you are connecting to some files you are connecting to some external system so you have to properly close all the channels before completing the particular execution okay right. so depend upon so where you are using can, can we uh, throw more than one exception in uh, uh, yes. here yes how can you Easy throw comma. means if you get see it is not possible to get two exception at the same time right if null pointer exception happen it will stop that that time itself next line it won't execute okay yes, correct yes. in the method signature yes, yes. yes you can have more than one exception here i can with space i can add null pointer and arithmetic exception i can add but real time when you face the first time the exception itself what it will do either it will skip the pass there itself or it will go back to the method from where it is called it won't continue if you want to continue right. you will stop the error and you will do okay got it yeah yes thank you yeah you just one question uh, like you were saying that uh, method a is going to call method b and there is some exception in method b so in this case will the program crash or uh, how it will work let's say in method a uh, there are some couple of statements uh, which are need to be executed so when this exception is passed back to method a so will the program crash or it will gracefully exit okay so it's again how we are handling the code shrini uh, okay. say uh, if you get a exception you are calling a method b and you are depending upon method b for some activity and method b is crashed stating that uh, some uh, a file not found or some error happen it is sending back to the method a so what people will do it if they get that exception either they can abruptly close that process or they can add some intelligence in the code and say that if this file is not working then go to the next file they can continue the process sometimes oh. this is also will happen so some uh, uh, db query i'll take an example say you have a table a in the table a you have the list of employee id and you have another table that will have the employee details so what you will do in that file you will first check one employee id and you will go to the next file and you will check it whether the, uh, to get the complete employee details okay one one file has only id another file has a complete details about the employee so you will get the first cell and you will go and check it if there is a match you will get back if there is no match you will go to the next row you will get the next employee detail and you will check it so likewise you can add the logic so case to case it will vary if you need you can continue the process you can skip that particular row and you can go to the next row and if you feel that no no i want only this particular employee detail i am not going to check for the next next one means yes you can close it and you can send a message to the ui stating that no records found for the employee id which you are looking for oh, okay so the, the program is not going to crash right when we are using this throws no statement. exceptions we are handling so that is the main thing of handling this exception program crash won't happen but your result may not be the same which you are looking for the positive happy path is there right that oh. may not be the one will happen you won't get the expected uh, result but your program will continue whether you can continue or not that again you can uh, handle it in your code oh, so okay. how so they first, will do you know yeah. even All that right. method call that from method a you are calling a method b means that calling itself they will add it in a try catch okay i will show you something this is the main method right 
and uh, they can add something like this just uh, i'm not going to write the complete code just i will show say for example i'm adding add num this is the method and this method i can call it in the main method so this is my method a method b kind of thing so what they will do is they will add it inside this something like this they will add so from method a i am calling this method b in my case add number is the method b i am going into the method b and something has happened from here i am throwing some issue has happened and i am throwing something means where it will come it will come to the catch block of this okay they are going to catch it there okay yes yes yeah thank you and one more thing with this since in the java application we are having you know objects passed to between methods and all so every time when an object is passed to a method do we need to check whether it's uh, it's exists or uh, not always i would say that whether you are passing objects or any uh, arguments okay leave keep that object concept aside if you are doing any argument for method we call it as arguments right whether it is an object or it is a uh, normal uh, integer or character whatever may be your data needs to be validated if you are planning to do some process on the data whether you are going to add something on top of it retrieve something modify something that we call it as data process right that data needs to be validated if the data is proper then only on top of that you have to do some activity data processing okay oh, okay so even that's why i say this is argument for a method whatever i have here is it can be anything it can be anything this argument if i am planning to do something inside this block the method this is the scope of the method right inside the method if you are planning to do anything then i have to check for that particular data validation needs to be done that's why i have covered the operators in the beginning itself and operators for uh, primitive data type and non primitive data type also i have told you what are the operators or the comparison things you can use equals to not equals to null empty those and all we have discussed right so that you have to do it yeah yeah, yeah. thank you so you we uh, this exception depends upon the data right it basically validate the data right it won't break the uh, code am i right it will break the code if you don't handle the exception properly too much of exception okay. also sometimes will create a problem server crash also it will leads to memory leak and other things will come if you didn't handle the code properly okay so uh, why i ask this question in terms of performance suppose a uh, we have some application log where we have a uh, thousand of exception right so that will impact our response also response of the application uh again uh, so you are in performance so i will tell in that same language you are opening a db yeah. connectivity some db connections you are open right. and uh, some activities you are doing in mid of that some exception has happened so usual processes have this code inside the drive block and in the catch block you have to properly close the db connection that is a process say for example the developer forgot to do it or due to something he missed it he has the connection open but exception happened and it came out of the method execution so what will happen the opened db connection will be there as it is if you continue to right. do the same activity for n number of times you know the db connection pool that limitations the thread limitations everything right one fine time right. you come to a place that where you won't have the enough uh, uh, db connections to continue the next activity performance issue will come Check. not only db other What's... memory related things also will come right. it can happen on db as well as application also so, yeah yes yes whichever resource basically i would say that the technical term is resource i used to say it can be a db resource yeah. it can be your uh, uh, input getting files anything generally if you don't handle the resource properly uh, it will lead to a problem it can be the performance issue or it can be your functional issue right
any other doubt can i proceed on the next topic in exception itself yes please okay yeah thank you so next thing is related to the one which i have discussed see i have modified and i personalized this content because i after coming to know both of your background i have added few more demo examples so that it will be uh, uh, useful for your uh, real time uh, that's why i added few more examples in exceptions block itself uh, for performance or your functional automation kind for both you and uh, shini so i have a scanner and um, this is same code which you have used uh, multiple times before so i'll be using the same thing i'll go back to the top okay scanner scanner equal to new scanner and um, i would say that system dot i this is an argument expected by the scanner class which is already available in my package and as usual thing to read some input i will be using uh, next int so that is also i have added and uh, next thing is you have to close the resource so here the scanner is a resource which i open to read the data if i once i'm done okay whether i'm getting an exception or not whether it is dropped in middle or not this resource needs to be properly closed after the use so this code is good to have like i should do something like this uh, scanner dot close so what it will do it will close the resource then i'll be printing that i value so this piece of code is a regular format that i'm reading an input i'm printing the input but after reading the input i have to close the resource instead of doing like this what i can do here is i will use the try block itself okay so this is called try with resource so the same code i'm going to alter a little bit that is int i equal to zero and uh, i'm going to have this code inside the try block so this is a try block code and uh, inside the drive block i'm going to have this piece of code only and finally i'll print it so here what i have done is i didn't specify the scanner dot close explicitly but i'm using the concept called try with resource so what this will do is it in turn will handle the resource handling and all in in turn will close the scanner and i don't need to specifically tell that please close it okay so this is called try with resource this is one of the concept in try uh, this is good practice to do but most of the time what we will do is we will manually add the scanner dot close inside the uh, catch block or in the finally block we used to do but it's good to know this also when you come across this code you don't think that it is something wrong this is correct only this concept is called try um, with resource concept okay so far i was telling everything is a inbuilt one that file not found it's a inbuilt class arithmetic uh, exception is inbuilt class and um, null pointer exception is inbuilt class but i may write one custom exception also so if i want some code that needs to be executed uh, with my um, requirement i don't need to really depend upon the existing code for example so what i can do here is let me comment all other code and i will keep this block itself okay fine. and this also will come as these topics i have covered check the exception so i want to keep all the exception in the same file in the exception demo itself that's why i commented all other code so now we are going to discuss a topic called checked exception sorry custom exception checked exception we have already checked custom exception so what i'm going to do here is i am manually create my going to create my own exception say for example i'm going to a, a atm and i'm trying to withdraw an amount 
say uh, 700 rupees i'm planning to withdraw but in my balance i have only 500 rupees so what will happen i'm i'm i cannot get the money so in that case what i'm planning to do here is i'm planning to throw some exception to the user stating that hey there is insufficient fund in your account okay insufficient fund exception i'm trying trying to show to the user instead of just saying that your uh, uh, transaction is failed transaction is failed why it is failed i have to tell the user so i am manually going to create one exception that concept is called custom exceptions so for that i am going to keep two variables one is my balance my balance is uh, 500 rupees and uh, another is uh, the amount which i am planning to withdraw uh, that is called 700 rupees and um, i will have a dry block or i will say like this this dry block will be there if my balance is less than the withdraw amount whichever amount i'm trying to withdraw i am planning to throw some exception new exception i'm planning to create it is nowhere available in the java package i'm planning to create something new so i'm going to name the exception also which is called insufficient fund this is custom i'm going to create any name i can give so i'm giving insufficient fund exception and also i have to say that how much it is not available like i have only 500 and i'm looking for 700 so 200 rupees it's insufficient in my account so i am going to pass that also the 200 the balance 200 like so withdraw minus balance if i do it will give me the exception that is that message then in the cash flow i am going to so it's throw you can use anywhere you can use it in the catch also you can use it in the uh, try also but it depends upon the business logic so here i am adding in the try block itself because my requirement is this is not the problem but it is related to the business uh, because as per the business if you try to withdraw some amount which is beyond your uh, available balance it is a problem so i want to inform the user that it is a problem with your account if in case some problem with the machine if in case my transaction failed a time out that and all it's my runtime exception that i have to put it in the cash block itself but this what is this properly i am able to connect with the bank apis properly i can get into my account properly i can see everything but i am unable to complete the transaction because of my account issue so for that i am keeping it inside the throw uh, throw in the uh, try block itself and uh, here i am adding this in sufficient i will copy this otherwise insufficient this one and uh, inside this i'm saying not enough money enough balance or something in the upper so now if you look at this it is throwing me red in color because i don't have any such class in my java package so i have to create it now so when i mouse over cannot resolve so cannot resolve create a type parameter in separate exceptions or I have to create a class so what i'm going to do i will create a new class and for that new class i have to add it so i'm creating a new class the same package once the class is created inside the class i'm going to add it so usually what is the procedure any exception means it should be extends of your general exception that method so this is the exception i'm creating and um, inside this i'm going to add uh, something called um, amount okay because i want to show the difference also so when constructor i am planning to create here so constructor means it is a method and it matches with the 
name of the class so if somebody calling this constructor when the constructor will be called whenever i am creating a object this particular constructor will be called so here i am initializing the value so simple my code is ready now i will go back to the code and i will explain from uh, from the beginning so traversing of code we are going to do so first what i am doing here is i have a balance of 500 but i try to withdraw 700 so i have to throw an exception to the user usually that we will do it here okay but to come to the catch block there has to be some exception hacker in the try block then only i can go to the catch block but here there is no problem no and runtime exception nothing so i am manually injecting a exception here i am manually throwing a exception here usual exception means automatically it will go to the catch block here i am manually creating an exception i am using the throw keyword and i am planning to use the insufficient exception class insufficient fund exception class so for that i am creating an insufficient fund exception class so whenever somebody calls like this new insufficient means what new keyword means obviously it's a object creation so i am creating a object for this particular class with this argument so what is this argument withdraw minus balance so 700 minus 500 is 200 so i'm calling with this argument and i'm going to this so whenever a object is created the constructor will be called and it's a single argument constructor whenever the 200 rupees is passed here that will be added here okay this one if i want to print it i told right that amount needs to be passed to the user so what i'm going to do here is here instead of just a log statement i'm going to say that e so here e is what the object of this particular insufficient fund exception so e dot amount is a variable so this amount is already set here where it is set here so the 200 is passed and the 200 is assigned using the constructor assignments and it is available for me. Now I'm going to run this code. Can you see the error which I'm getting? Not enough balance in the account. So 200. So you, good practices don't show how much uh, balance is available, uh, not available just you have to show that uh, not enough balance is available if you are working for any banking customer uh, my personal uh, guidance here is don't show how much is left or how much is because there are some cases if somebody is uh, misusing the card then we itself are giving the clue to them if they are trying to take the 10,000 rupees means and your balance has 5,000 only means you itself are giving a clue to them that uh, you 5000 is not available something means they can usually go and uh, um, uh, type that 5000 and they can get okay so usually we won't go like this but if you want to track some details this way you can track that's what i'm trying to say here like you can have a variable in your class and that variable you can access like this that's what i'm trying to communicate here but in the real time, if you come across a similar situation, if you're planning to work for any banking customer kind of thing, uh, don't do like this. You have to just say that not enough balance available in the account. Exactly how many is left, how many is you don't have that and that figure you're not supposed to give. Uh, that is at the uh, uh, bank and financial kind of thing. That is business requirement. This is a technical one I'm telling you. Technically, this way you can access the uh, instance variable. So this is my instance, E is my instance, and amount is the instance variable. So this is how you can do. Any doubt in this custom exception? No, you yeah. Good. So uh, with this, I'm completing the exception, and I'm jumping into the uh, one important and interesting topic also, I would say. Uh, especially for uh, performance uh, person and also for uh, functional automation also you should know if you are like uh, nowadays even in uh, functional automation they are not running with the only one right so some sometimes you may end up in running two three things at the same time so it's good to learn the concept is multi-threading 
so uh, how you are going to handle the multi threads and uh, uh, how uh, you can uh, run multiple threads how we can manage multiple sales so these are the things we are going to discuss today so interesting at the same time challenging i would say many students or many new uh, employees they will read this theoretically and they will feel it is easy to do but they struck into an issue when they actually use it in the regular development because when you handle the threads you have to be very cautious when you are creating a thread you have to uh, stop it properly start means stop should be there you have to exit it properly otherwise if you keep so many threads open it will mess up your whole process stuck threads will come technical term for you ranjit so many threads are there and uh, you don't have a new thread for the new process means you know right the impact so you should be very careful when you are dealing with your multi threading so first everything is a thread uh, whatever code we are doing right so everything deals with thread so far indirectly it was available now we are going to see that directly so for that i am going to borrow the code which i have already written here so what i am going to do <coughs> here is the same piece of code let me copy paste i am planning to introduce an exception here this try block i don't want this catch block i don't want okay i have something called here okay fine so this same code uh, last week you have discussed so i'm going to execute now so into a equal to 5 and b equal to 0 c equal to 0 and i'm dividing like this so i'm going to run this code now so far we may think that thread is something different concept and we are not getting to the thread concept right but knowingly and unknowingly we are working on the thread model only from the day one because if you look at this exception exception in thread main so what are the activity i was telling you the demo which i was showing that itself will deal with the thread concept only so the main method some execution is happening right this is happening in a thread the only difference is it is a single threaded process so far so one thread i have and that thread is executing all this process okay so everywhere wherever you are going the thread concept is there whether you are using the keywords called dot dot thread dot dot thread dot shape whether you are doing like this or not there is a thread which is running behind in all your program so the thread is there throughout your learning course so now i am going to get into the thread explanation so i have two cl classes uh, for my discussion i am having uh, <coughs> say i have a class called book and um, uh, first let me create a class then i will create an object so there is a class called book and um, this class have a method which will be like updating a db okay so uh, usually updating db means it's like different process for now what i'm do, going to do here is some log statement alone i'm adding there is a method called update db and uh, inside this method i'm going to um, have some statement called updating db okay and um, that's a simple code and i will go to this uh, method and i will add one more thing call like uh, i'm going to update the db for five times so i'm using the loop concept here int i equal to 1 i less than or equal to 5 i plus plus So I'm going to execute this for five times. Okay, yeah. so five times I'm going into the uh, DB and I am doing some transaction. For now, I'm just adding a log statement. Real time, like you will open the DB connection, you will do transaction and all. It will take some time. So in the interest of time, I'm adding a hard coded things like this. I have one more class called num, 
and this num again it is like it is going to print some value so i'm saying that print this method is going to do some print alone um some one to five i want to print so int i uh, equal to one i listen or equal to five uh, i plus plus and uh, inside this i have my uh, print statement so two classes and one is to update the db another one is to uh, print some number from one to five and i have created one um, demo method inside this demo method i am creating the objects for both the classes both the book class and uh, for the num class i am creating an object here using the new keyword and i am um, going to call the methods now so book dot i have only one method called update db similarly num dot i have a method called print so i am doing this now i am going to run this code so it is doing my activity so five times it is saying updating db 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 and uh, five times it is printing one two three four five and usually you know very well that uh, updating a db means it won't be as quick as you can expect like usually it will take some time right so i'm going to manually introduce some delay in the db process so the good way to do like this is uh, mm, making the thread to sleep for some time I will have uh, this wait. instead of I type it I will show that uh, code I am going to use a concept called thread dot sleep so what this is going to do is it is going to make my thread to sleep for some time so immediately when I add it it is saying that you have to come up with unhandled exception handle exception to the method signature I am not going to do this I am going to add the surrounds with try and catch so this exception i got it my code is ready so what i did previously it was just printing the statement as it is a db connectivity it won't run as quick as it is running before right so i'm introducing some delay this is nothing but thread dot sleep so this itself a thread single threaded process and i'm making the thread to sleep for five seconds okay so first time it will print that value and it will sleep for five seconds second time it will print the value it will print for five seconds so likewise for every iteration for every i equal to one i equal to two three four five this thread is going to sleep for five five seconds so let me run this code previously it gave that uh, output chat pata chat like it gave, gave me very fastly right now you see it has printed something called updating db and it is waiting second time it is printing again it is waiting for five more seconds so likewise it will complete the five times printing and uh, then only it will do what it will go to the printing of now you see after this printing the one two three four five printing would be very fast because there is no delay in the printing that number but connecting to the db only will take some time so i manually introduce a delay okay so to match with the real time process now let's come to the real time process for example you have two things you are planning to do one is connecting with the db another one is doing some business logic but these two logics are nowhere interconnected you can connect to db you can get the data but that data you are not going to use for the next step these two are two different process but still you are running it sequentially and it is adding extra time so what i plan to do here is as there is no connectivity between these two why i unnecessarily needs to wait for this particular method to execute the print method because it is not related to the db connectivity activity so i can run it independently i can run it parallelly also so for that i have one thread already i am going to add one more additional thread so in the book 
as it is taking more time i'm planning to keep it aside like i want to create a new thread for this book class execution alone so i'm going for a thread concept to create a new thread i have to extend this with the thread class so thread class is the inbuilt class available for my multi threading concept so whenever you have this one okay to avoid this waiting we can run the update db in a separate thread not in the main thread so i am doing like this instead of this update db what i am going to do here is i am going to rename this as a run okay so this is something called overriding because inside this thread class there is a method called run and that method i am overriding now so inside this run i am adding all my logic so let me change the time instead of waiting for 5 seconds i will wait for 2 seconds so that i can run this demo quickly so 2 seconds i have added now what i am going to do here is i am going back to the demo class so this update db is no more available because i have renamed that with run why i renamed with run because whenever i have to start a thread it will go and look for a method called run so obviously i need a method called run in the class which i want to create a thread that's why i purposely changed the update db uh, method as run so now i don't need this method anymore what i can do i can go for this book dot start so this is done so now i'm going to execute scope if you look at this this 1 2 3 4 printing is already completed now only this updating db slowly printing so two threads i have one is my main thread another one is this uh, book class thread so with this i can run two things at the same time and uh, i feel that this 1 2 3 also i want to run it with some delay means same thing i can do i can go for this thread dot sleep some 2 seconds as i have a error uh, i have to cover it with a try and catch go to the more actions surround with try catch so now if you feel that this particular thread also will take some time to execute because it is delayed by 2 so what i can do this class also i can create the multi threading concept so i'm doing and this method i am renaming with run and uh, i'm coming to this demo class inside the demo class right but it should be lower in case okay public so i'm coming here this method won't work anymore so i'm running now let me run this code so now you can see this is running in one thread this is running in another thread and to make it very simple i will have a lock statement also here so that you will know how many threads are there this is main thread okay i'll run like this now i'll run this code so now it is saying 1 2 3 everything is printing this is main thread so basically i have sorry this i should be writing start i have to start a thread sorry if you look at this the main thread is executed in the beginning itself because it doesn't need to wait for these two to complete because this is a separate thread the main thread so for the separate thread this is working this book as a separate thread created and the num as a separate thread created so totally in my program i have three threads now okay so likewise how many threads if you want to uh 
keep you can keep and uh, you can keep the process separate if you feel that it is interlinked then you can keep it in the single thread itself if you feel that it is nowhere related to each other then the suggestion is to uh, have a separate threads okay any doubt in this so, uh, you yes yeah, so you in case of multi threading there is a chance of thread lock also right so how we avoid uh, thread lock in uh, code that is a concept called synchronized i'll be covering it in tomorrow class so this is not the end of thread uh, session as the time up uh, okay. like uh, i'm ending now in thread we few more uh, concept we have to see thread alive and uh, how we can handle that life cycle and all we'll see tomorrow and yes. also if possible could you please cover this five five state of thread when we use it i mean stop enable using code when can we use this uh, state okay yeah the life cycle of a thread you are asking okay uh, demo wise i think it will be complex for me to replicate uh, i will try to do this uh, two things okay at least a start and stop and uh, i'll see out of five how many we can cover it in the demo i'll sure, explain you sure. uh, theoretically those five things what is this uh, uh, thread uh, start uh, stop that five stages i'll be explaining some places they will say four some places they will say five that i will explain mm -hmm. uh, code wise mm -hmm. i will uh, check how best we can fit into this uh, demo sure yeah yeah you will, will it uh, use more cpu if we are using more threads in a program uh, depend upon the uh, process you are going to do with the thread okay. see any uh, okay so if you are just going to use this uh, thread uh, to uh, print something or some light weighted things then it won't contribute much on the cpu but uh, everything is a db connectivity everything is db some heavy lifting things you are doing at the same time means yes okay so generally in uh, java application design also they do they commonly use threads in more most more places or sometimes they use yes yes uh, we do in most of the cases uh, uh, whenever we feel that some performance needs to be uh, managed say um, okay. I told right when you are logging in, it is a single process for you. But in the back end, uh, we will be doing five to six type of method calling, some authentication, some other DB update, retrieving from DB. So many things we will do. So okay. if you do one after the other, uh, it will uh, take more time. So for a user, you don't really feel like waiting for five minutes or ten minutes in the same screen. So what okay. they will do is we will parallelly execute some transaction and uh, some UI technique also will do like uh, we will paint some page and we will keep it whenever we that particular uh, uh, transaction is over the DB call is over whenever the particular API call is over that particular data alone we will populate in the UI but for you you just uh, entered your username and password and you clicked on um, login. So when you see some uh, uh, online shopping app also, it will just show some data somewhere like in the bottom, something will be loading, but the main page would be loaded already. So it is like multiple calls you make and multi-threading concepts are uh, really in use nowadays. Multi-session and multi-threading only will help you your performance improvement. Yeah, yeah, sure, Ibiya. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And is one of the most important yeah. topic here. No, no, you will. Thank yes, you. Yes. Yeah. Um, so with this, I'm ending today's session. Uh, we are already 10 minutes more. That's why uh, I'll continue in uh, tomorrow's session also. Uh, that uh, deadlock scenarios and the other things we'll discuss tomorrow. Uh, thanks for joining. Sure. We'll connect tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you.